Hey YouTube, Jedi Fuka here, and in this video I want to talk a little bit about the Pillar of Trials, and we're going to be discussing the Radiant Light one, on, or the Pillar of Light one on this one, and then I'll kind of discuss the Pillar of Dark and Pillar of Taint in some other videos. But for this video I want to show, I'm on the very last stage of this, pretty close to getting to where I can beat it, I can get to the boss, I just keep running out of time, so I'm still reworking my team for that. But I want to tell you guys my strategies for how I got through this, and point out the uh, champions who are really like the MVPs of pushing a lot of these stages. And also some of these champions I'm going to show will help you out in other areas of the game like Feywilds and stuff like that. So let's get into it. We're going to jump over to the champions and we're just kind of kind of go through them. And I'll tell you who I've been using and what types of strategies have been working for me. So... I have two different strategies that I use when I'm pushing the content. One strategy is that I'll build a tanky team with a reviver and I will use it for survivability. And then another strategy is whenever I'm facing the teams who have revivers, I build it for maximum damage and I generally only have a little bit of heal on that team and then I just push through destroying the other team as fast as I can. So. We're not going to get too much into legendary champions, but I'll tell you, of course, who I'm using in the legendaries and who you can replace it with so you know it's going to keep you a little behind where I'm at if you don't have the same champion. But my legendary MVP is Jillian. She's on all of my teams for this, of course, because those heals and defense up. Like My team just would not survive very well without her. If you don't have her, you're definitely going to want someone who's doing some really good heals for you. The next best person in line to take her out is actually going to be Quarion the Rare. So if you don't have Jillian, make sure you build him up. I built him up last season. I used him. I had him all booked out, completely leveled up, and he was definitely someone who I used for this as well. So he can be um, kind of a replacement. He's just not quite as good as she is, but you can definitely use him to help out with pushing teams. Now... For my tanky strategy team, and this is also going to help you out in Feywilds, if you guys have Kamari here, I highly recommend you build him. Um, if you guys are going through Feywilds, stuff like that, you'll know the stages where you're facing, some of them will have two or three of Kamaris in there. They're a pain in the butt because he's really good with being super tanky and then also being uh, where he can revive one other person. So what I do with this guy is I build him in a super tanky set so he has tons of survivability. Um, I did scroll mine out because I wanted that recharge time to be as low as I could get it to. Um, but the cool thing with him, so this is only a one person target which sucks, but the cool thing is that you get that resurrection and even if you're not resurrecting someone, you're going to get a heal on them and you can get this uh, defense up right here. So this is really good. Um, and then you'll restore a little bit of the ultimate energy after you resurrect them, but it's not a ton. You get 75% of whatever they had, so that's good. The resurrection is at 60% of their health, but if you don't resurrect, you're going to do a heal instead, and that's only going to be 40% of their max HP. So my strategy with him is usually... If I'm having a hard time with the stage, I will turn off his ultimate and I just keep it ready to use. If someone is close to death, then I'll use it so they get a bigger heal. If they're not close to death, if most of my people are at least like 30-40% health, then I'll leave this on and just let him heal them up and get that defense up. So highly recommend checking him out if you have him, guys. I throw him in my Feywilds as well and he's really good for this. Um, another champion who I don't have built right now, but I used last season is Clovis. He's really good for helping in here. His ultimate here, he has that attack down. It's really good for the bosses. And he also gets the ultimate reduction by 20%. So this is a very useful skill. Um, if you use him, I would also just use him as a main tank. So you'll replace that tank spot. Um, instead of, you know, you have a, a tank or utility champion. He can kind of fit either role. But I would use him just as your tank and use another support for heals or something like that. So you still get enough damage dealers. Um, so the way that I build my tanky teams is I build them around this champion here as well, Catherine. If I'm doing my tanky team, I do Catherine and then Jillian to get my heals. And then I do Kamari from the revive. And if you don't have Jillian, like I said, you can use Quarion for that. But Catherine here is super amazing. 
She has a really good heal. I built her with plenty of uh, enlightenment, and we get that debuff immunity on there. Um, she's definitely an MVP healer. If you have her and you haven't build, built her yet, go build her. Go scroll her out. She's 100% worth it. Even with Jillian, I still use her a ton. Um, I definitely couldn't replace her. She's, she's very good. So if you have her, it's another MVP for this dungeon area. Um, that would kind of be a breakdown of my, like, tanky teams utilizing those three and the two damage dealers. Now for my damage dealers, I'm going into my lightning, and I am using some legendary damage dealers. If you guys have legendary damage dealers, just plug in whoever you got. If you don't, some suggestions in epics is that if you have some dauntless champions, they synergize really well. So if you have Shaltar, you can use like him and Shargrel here and that damage slot. Um, but really for the damage dealers, just whoever you really like to use. So if you don't want to use Dauntless, you don't have to. You can even come over here into Radiant and you can just do a full Radiant team if you wanted. As far as like doing support, there are some decent support champions here in the Lightning. Iola here, she's really good with that attack penalty down too and the silence, especially for the waves. I um, mean, of course, in Pillar of Light, a lot of this is waves, so it's good to have someone who has some control like that. Lydia is a decent tank if you like to use um, her. She's got this attack speed up and mortality, and we got that control immunity. So if you don't have some of the radiant ones I just mentioned, she would fit a good role in the tank. But I would highly suggest using uh, Kamari for your tank just because of the um, revive that he's going to have on there. Now, whenever I use my damage dealing team, usually what I do is I only use one healer, which is Jillian. Like I said, you replace him with Corian or even with Catherine if you have her, throw her in there for your healer. And then I just do a ton of Dauntless team um, champions. So right now I use like Garrett, Daravol, and Sutha. And then for my final one, I try to plug in Shaltar if I can, because he really enables your Dauntless teams. And then I use those four to just try to milk through champions. Now where I'm at on the final one is where it's getting a little difficult, because my issue right now is that with just Jillian here, I don't have enough heals to make it through the waves to get to the boss. And if I do get to the boss, I don't have enough heals to survive before they can milk the boss. But when I take one of them out and I slot in a healer, I have a hard time killing the wave off. So I'm still working through that. But generally getting up to where I'm at now, this would be a good strategy for me. Um, and the way I would do it is the waves that have tons of healers. I would bring in my damage team, which I guess is basically four damage dealers and one support. Um, sometimes I will replace a damage dealer with someone along the lines of Iola to get that like control with the attack down. Um, I mostly used Irina this time, but if you have Iola, she's great too, especially if you have the books for her. But if not, Irina here, you get that attack penalty too, so she's another good support unit to slot in there and use for something like that. Um, so that's just kind of my two strategies, is either super tanky or super built. So real quick, just going over all the MVP epic champions that you guys should be looking at if you need someone to build and help you push this pillar of light. Um, for damage dealers, like I guess these Dauntless ones are pretty good. Lydia is a decent tank, but I would recommend going over to your Radiant rather than using her. Um, and then these other Dauntless champions, I've not really worked a whole lot with them, so I can't tell you too much about how MVP they are. But coming down into the rares, Irina and Enna are two really, really amazing rares. Um, Enna's got you a cleanse on there if you have waves where you need that little bit of a cleanse. And she offers some decent healing. It's not the best, but it is pretty good. You get the recovery over time. Um, I'm a bigger fan of the instant heals like what Catherine or Jillian does, but recovery over time is still good. The hard thing with that is if you're not pairing her with another healer, she might not be. you might not get enough recovery over time to stay alive, so keep that in mind. Irina here is super good with waves with that attack penalty too. So don't overlook her in your rares if you're having a hard time with the wave. Sometimes just dropping their attack is going to be something that helps you a lot. Coming over here into Radiant. Um, Radiant is really stacked with good support. So like I said, the three best, Kamari, Clovis, Catherine there. Definitely make sure you look into them. If you have Garius, he is like a number one champion in the game for sure. 
he would definitely probably be the best option for a tank. You'll have a tank plus a hill. If you combine something like if you have Garius and even if you have Jillian and you have Garius, honestly, I would even maybe pick him over her just for the simple fact that you could do like Garius with his insane hill mixed with Kamari if you have him with that revive and then three really good damage dealers and you're going to have a pretty stacked team. Um, and then if someone does die, you have Kamari there to pick him back up for you. So that's a good strategy to look into. Um, for damage dealers in here, if you don't have any legendary damage dealers and you're needing to slot people in from the uh, epics, Hugo is pretty good. He is a single target damage dealer, um, but he's definitely one to look into. You do have the rally champions. I personally haven't done a whole lot of testing with rally. Um, I did some in Season 0, and they were just really kind of underwhelming, in my opinion. Um, and I've heard the same thing from other people. I don't know if they improved it a lot this season, because I haven't had time to play around with them. But it is an option if you think it looks like something you like. Not too sure it's the best option. But Hugo um, and Martina are both rally champions. And I don't use them for being rally, but I like to use them just because as an individual champion, they're really good. So you can keep that in mind as well. If you have two champions who are really good, at least they still get a little extra synergy. But Hugo's a pretty good damage dealer. And then Martina's another one that I used in Season 0. I really like her a lot, especially on the wave. She has a pretty decent um, AoE strike right here. Um, it hits pretty hard. So if you do something like combining these two, they're really good. And that rally is just a little extra. Just don't count on that as being like your main thing. Coming down into the rare champions, Corion here is your MVP of the rares for sure. Um, definitely don't overlook using this guy. You get that defense up along with the uh, HP heal. Um, the defense up on him, it is just the defense one, but it's, uh, oh, sorry, but it's, at least it's still getting that extra defense on your champions. So it still helps out quite a bit. You do have Meredith down here in the healers, but in all honesty, if you have Quarion, he does the heal and the defense up. Take him over Meredith. Um, if for some reason you don't have Quarion, then you can use her. But if you're this far into this um, season, you, you definitely should have all the rares by now. So anyways, guys, that's just kind of a quick breakdown of the champions that you might want to focus on if you're doing this. The main star of my team that got me all the way up to the end is going to be Kamari here. Basically, I got up to about stage 45, and then I kind of stalled out and was having a hard time beating it. I forget the exact stage, but somewhere around there. Then I came in, built up Kumari. because so my problem was, was I had one of my damage dealers. No matter how tanky I built him, he kept dying. Um, and then when I started building him too tanky, I just wasn't getting the damage I needed. So I brought Kumari in there, and he started reviving that damage dealer, and that was giving me the push that I needed to start going forward. Now the strategy that uses the Kamari to bring the hills, you can take that over into Fey Wilds and use it for the waves as well. So when you get into Fey Wilds, if you have some stages where you're having issues staying alive and you don't have any other revivers but you have Kamari in there, then definitely go in there, combine like a Kamari and if you have a, a Garius, and that's going to help you push Fey Wild stages as well. Kind of the same as what you're doing in the Pillar of um, Trials here. And then keep that in mind too, as you're doing these three stages, if you have certain champions that are just working really good on the waves for you, and then you hit a wave and the Fey Wilds that you're struggling with, the way I do it is I will then kind of like, first I'll try whatever team I'm using on Pillar of Light. If it fails, I'll go to my Pillar of Dark team. And if it fails, I go to my Pillar of Taint team. Um, because the teams that I'm building for these are going to be the teams that are going to also have Synergy and Fey Wilds. And then since Fey Wilds is mostly getting through waves, and all of this is just getting through waves, it's kind of the same concept. So it's good to just take your teams in here, rotate them into Fey Wilds if you're having issues with a certain spot. Or if you have like a champion in here that really helped you a lot, like what Kamari did, then go use them in Fey Wilds. It's going to push you up a lot. I took Kamari after I built him in here. I was stuck on one of the Feywild stages. I used him in there. He helped me break past that stage, and then I was able to shoot up to 129, which is now where I'm working on a strategy for that. So anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully this helps some of you out if you're trying to push that pillar of light. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to help you guys out. Y'all have a good one.